it should be noted that um, what Frank Drake said in his uh, speech he gave at the conference, the SETI conference, with regards to traveling through space at high velocity to reach this planet from another planet in the galaxy is, is correct. If you travel the tenth of percent of the speed of light, and you travel through the galaxy through galactic space, galactic space is junky, it's dirty. I saw his video online, I saw uh, Dr. Drake talking about this, and he said that a small pebble were to come in contact with your spacecraft as you travel just a tenth of the speed of light, the impact would be equivalent to, and he used high school physics, a nuclear bomb going off. The impact would be devastating. It would be utterly uh, it would be explosive. Professor Drake was in, indeed correct in saying this. Um, this is, in fact, dangerous. Unlike Star Trek, the next generation Star Trek and Star Wars, uh, this idea that we travel through space without being bombarded by particles that would destroy our spacecraft at high velocity uh, is absurd, isn't it? Well, space is junky, and it would be very dangerous to travel through ordinary three-dimensional space to get to this planet from another planet in the galaxy. Therefore, I submit what I have been told. The information I have, and this is coming to you secondhand, of course, is that they didn't come here. The, if you follow that this planet is currently being visited by extraterrestrial civilizations, then you have to ask yourself how did they get here without being destroyed. They didn't come here by means of three-dimensional space. They came here by means of, a, of another space. <clears throat> you could call it a third space, a space outside the third dimension. Um, some would call this a hyperspace. Many have theorized hyperspace being the fourth dimension. It is a velocity moving through warp, a wormhole effect and in that effect you enter into a kind of a subspace envelope which exists outside our normal space-time continuum. By that they can come here and in that space there is absolutely nothing. You just see a blue field, an endless blue. It would be just nothing. There would be a continuous white blue, not, not a sky, not a base or a bottom of any kind, but it would just be a continuously blue. And they can come here. They can also step through your bedroom walls, too. They can move through this, we'll call it a third space. And a third, what it is basically, if you were to align the molecular structure of all the all the atoms all within your wall, um, you line them up and you open up all the space that's there. Uh, solid matter is mostly comprised of empty space. And it's in the space between spaces is where they're coming through. This is how they get here. Now they can also align the molecular structure of space itself. Space is not empty. If you think that space right here, I've just moved my hand through, is empty, you're wrong. That's very wrong. That's a, that's a perception we have. Space is actually a solid itself, full of a dense atomic structure. And this, this atomic structure is comprised of magnetic and gravity fields and quantum particles, things like that. It's very, very dense. And it's, oh, it's a soup of this. It's constant. It's all around in the, in the universe. And if you align the, the atomic structure of space itself, you line up all those atoms and molecules where you open up, you get rid of all, and, and, and you move all of them aside so you can open up, leaving just the space that's in between the spaces of this atomic structure you open a wormhole, a portal into that other third space. And that third space is a dimension that exists between solid matter of our dimension. 
So it's it's in a direction I can't point into. It's a di it's a dimension I can't point up or down. Well, where is it? I they may be coming from another part of the galaxy to this planet, but they can also live and exist and even thrive in that third space. Many abductees who say they've been taken by aliens in their bedrooms at night um, will tell you. Now, for the moment, I exclude myself from that category just because it gets a little too too much for the viewers to sit here and go, what, what happened to you again? What, what? So I'm, I'm, I'm leaving all that out. Just they, they say that they saw beings in their bedroom at night walk right through a solid wall. The wall almost, it wasn't there. And then they were taken through the wall. The wall was translucent and they went into it. And they came back out. The beings simply, they woke up and they saw them walk out of the wall and come into their room and get them. They've learned how to align matter in a way to open up the empty spaces between it. So, okay, now you're getting some idea of the kind of technology we're dealing with here, uh, which is advanced. This, this, this became a rather confusing point with many in the uh, very, uh, you know, it's, it's a very exclusive little club, the ab alien abductee communities that are sitting in private secret Facebook groups sharing these accounts and stories online. Very exclusive little, little group of people, not little, but... Um, there, there's been much contra controversy, controversy and, and conjecture over what alien is who and where are they coming from. Well, it's, it's confused them. Are they coming from out there in the galaxy somewhere, or are they in fact coming from somewhere in inner space? We'll, we'll call it third space is the, the inner space, but from another dimension. Well, I don't really know, Jace. What, what's going on here? Well, what's happening with all that? The answer to the question to both is yes. They're both coming from another planet and through that inner space. In fact, it's that inner space is how they got to this planet to begin with. And they can get you anytime they want. Hence, they could walk right through the walls of the Pentagon and pull out anybody they want out of there. <coughs> they could go through Fort Knox the same way. They could walk through the White House where the President sits. They, they, they could walk through the CIA headquarters and walk through filing cabinets and people, even people. They could walk right out of people. It wouldn't harm them, but they just simply open a portal right out of a solid matter of that, that person and walk straight out. Uh, there's been this ridiculous thinking I've heard some out there say online that, well, we've got the, we can, we can take them down with radar beams. Well, if you happen to... Yeah, they, I, I would imagine if their craft come within the, within the vicinity of those beams, yes. Um, but the information sources I have, and um, I'm not going to ask you to believe where that came from, they, sometimes those craft you're seeing in the sky, even though you can video and photograph them, they're not always here in our dimension. Sometimes they're both here and they're there at the same time. So they're, they're, they're in two places uh, at once, just before they transit out of this space dimension to the next third space. So you may be seeing them, you may, you may even see a blip on radar, but then the radar, they seem to disappear. Where they go? <laughs> I think the appropriate question is where and when did they go? <laughs> Because they can simply slide from one space to another and end up on this planet and another planet someplace else. Where it could be some tropic world of reptilian life running around. And a much different kind of sun setting on those skies and some other world far away. Quite exotic. Thanks for watching.